Yeah. So one of the very, very big differences is um, sort of um, in some of the other areas, there's this notion of like you have really good gold standards and really clear evaluation metrics. So for instance, mm -hmm. you could go into face recognition, say, and maybe there's a very nice data set where everybody sat down and everybody can agree this person is this person and that person is that person. There isn't so much debate about it. And you can, and if your goal is to do face recognition or face detection, the error metric is pretty clear. So you can go in, get a data set. It's well annotated. There's a whole lot of disagreement and you have a clear metric to optimize. And then people can go to town with all the creative ideas for optimizing that metric. There are so many ways in which health data sets are not that. So for example, <laughs> in most clinical areas, the notion of like, what is the gold standard and what is the metric you're optimizing for is very unclear. So, as, so when we first framed the sepsis early, sepsis early detection problem, the question was, well, how early do you want to detect it? Because if it's too early, maybe providers won't recognize it. But right. if it's too late, but that's not very productive. So that's one example. The second example, okay, what is sepsis? That's an existential question. People will sit <laughs> down and debate, like, this person was treated for sepsis because they likely were septic, but somebody else might say, yeah, but this person was being a bit conservative and treating them. Got so it. what do you do? Do you treat that person as septic or not septic? Or do you treat it? So how do you think about that? Third, you could take data set from one hospital or one health system, and uh, you could learn a model that is very good at predicting there. But as soon, but you know, we've written numerous papers on this topic. Um, like when you move it to a different hospital, if you have these big, rich, deep models that are very flexible, can learn anything, they can easily pick up patterns that are very specific to how people practice in that hospital. When you go to a different hospital, that method may not generalize at all. In fact, there are papers showing, you know, certain methods are very brittle, easily break as you shift the underlying data. Um, and, and you want methods that are robust and to these kinds of shifts. So can we, so we need almost sort of like new class of reliable learning methods or, um, um, you know, uh, shift stable methods. Like they have a number of different names in the field, but basically methods that like, where if there are nuisance things that change in the data, they're not gonna actually impact the quality of the learning system or differently put, upfront you can give guarantees that if certain types of nuisance changes happen, they're not actually gonna hurt the software's performance in an unpredictable yeah. way, which is something that's very important in applications like you know, um, social impact applications, right? Where it's often uh, a question of life or death as, as opposed to say like advertising for, um, by contrast. Mm -hmm. I could talk about a number of other uh, methodological issues, but you know, all of these, like uh, how do you like health data are like so messy, so messy, and there's a lot of missingness. How do you take into account um, the, like by tackling the messiness and the uh, missingness and uh, measurement models in an intelligent way, you really can show 200, 300% improvements yeah. in precision um, or sensitivity.